the army deployed under Operation Prosper. This is offering a one million rand reward for any information that... Around 4 a.m. this morning, that's uh, in Tlantla Lux. bag full of cash. The minister was very happy and appreciated of it. Majority of things in this life, they are set up to entrap us but they are camouflaged as they are for us. We constantly take part and engage in these things, thinking they are enriching us, allowing us to learn and grow personally, but only to find that they are entrapping us over and over again. The next thing, you, you can't think for yourself. Your ideas, your ideologies, the things that you stand for, you find that they are not your original thinking, but highly influenced by your surroundings and the things that you consume on a daily basis. So with that being said, on today's video, we're going to be talking about how do you take back control of your life? How do you take back control of your mind, the things that you surround yourself with so that you start enriching yourself, start pouring into yourself and start working towards improving who you are on a day-to-day -day basis? Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer Ngumalo. I do hope that you stick around by clicking that red subscribe button on the bottom and also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. So today's video is highly influenced by Iman Katan. Now I may be pronouncing his word, his name incorrectly. I'm sure that I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but as you know, when we live in different parts of the world, we don't pronounce things the same way. And I'm hoping that you guys are going to forgive me for people who are loyal fans of Iman. I am as well. Please forgive me if I butchered his name, but this video is highly influenced by what I heard from one of his videos. And when he said that it actually struck me and I actually took it as a quote because I feel like there is something that many of us need to live by and actually enforce in our life. If we have any intentions, of getting anywhere in life if we have any intentions of progressing growing and building who we are into people that we are proud of so what does the quote say do not get consumed in life by things that do not get you paid especially if you do not have anything that pays you I'm gonna read that again do not get consumed in life by things that will not get you paid especially if you do not have anything that pays you. There's two parts of this quote that struck me. The first one is do not get consumed in life by things that do not get you paid. So that's the first part. The things that we focus on, the things that we pay attention on that seemingly look important, but they're actually not important because they add no value in your life. And more so, you, you also add no value in it. But many times, whenever we are engaging in these things, we feel like we are adding value in it. We feel like it's going to change something in it because most of the time it gets our emotions running. It gets our heart rate running and you know, we get all riled up by these things, but you find that they are not adding any value in your life. But the most painful part is that you are not adding any value in these things. So that's the first part of what he said that really struck me. And then the second part of the thing of, of what he said is, especially if you don't have anything that pays you. I feel like right now in South Africa, we are living in a country where there is high level of unemployment. And the reason for that is because of just how bad the economy has been. And also there's just an oversupply of skills, oversupplies, oversupply of skills but then there's not really a demand for those skills and so it creates this place whereby there is high unemployment and i feel like as a result of this un un unemployment and a result of economy that is not good and also just things political issues also that are just going crazy crime in the country that is going crazy it has led us to be so consumed by what is going on on a day-to-day -day basis without thinking what value are you adding and also what value is that thing adding in our lives and so we get so consumed in all of these things which are important i'm not going to take away from how important all of these things are but if you are not adding value in these things and, are, and they are not adding value in your life what is the point so that is what this quote basically says is do not get that don't get consumed by things that do not get you paid because end of the day what is most important right now is are you getting paid 
if you're gonna wake up each and every day and you're gonna take time to sit on Twitter for hours and hours and hours, scrolling through, through Twitter, commenting on things because you feel like they're important, commenting on political issues, commenting on social issues, commenting on celebrity issues, are those things adding value in your life? Are those things paying you? Are you getting paid every day? What the what people don't understand is the most most people that are on Twitter, most people that are on Instagram, most people that are on YouTube, they get paid. I get paid by YouTube. People who are like celebrities and people who are content creators on Twitter get paid by the things that they post. Get paid by posting things that revel your revel your emotions, things that tick you off, things that pushes you to want to say something. They get paid by those things, through those things, because that increases their number of views. It increases their number of interactions. It increases the eyes on their profile. And what does that do? It brings in money for them. When people, when someone posts, posts on Instagram, chances are they are a creator and there's a way that they get paid. When someone posts on TikTok and they are religious about posting on TikTok, chances are they are getting paid somehow. And so you come as a person that doesn't get paid, that makes no income through interacting in these things and you put in hours and hours and hours of your day just interacting, you know, getting your emotions running and riled up, you know, saying things that actually do not enrich you. But then at the time when you're saying it, it sounds as if you are smart. It sounds as if you are very intelligent and you are a thinker. But then you forget that those things don't get you paid. They don't put money in your pocket. And you think that you're adding value by saying something, but actually you're not. And so that, that phrase when he said it, when a, a, a man said it, it really struck me and it really propelled me to create this video. And I'm hoping that by talking about these things, it's going to spark something in many of you guys that watch my channel that you need to start being more conscious of the things that you surround yourself with, be conscious of the things that you consume on a day-to-day -day basis, because those are the things that are either gonna propel you forward or they're gonna hold you back. So let us get into the points. So as I said, the point of this video is how do you then take back control of your life? How do you then start prioritizing things that actually get you paid or that get you closer to getting paid rather than getting you further and further away from getting paid? How do you do that? The first thing that I would really advise you to do is you do not need to know everything that is going on around you. Now, remember I was going, I went to do my nails this week, last week, and I was in the saloon in the morning and there was this man who was cutting his hair and he asked this question from one of the ladies next to me, one of the ladies that was doing hair. He posed this question to her and said, sister, do you watch the news? And she said, no, I don't. And she, he was like, you cannot watch the news. If you don't watch the news, that means that you don't love yourself. Because if you love yourself, you want to know everything that goes on around you. Everything that goes on outside of your door. And when he said that, I could see the, convic the conviction that he had on this. The importance of knowing what is going on around you, knowing what is going on around the world, watching the news. He even said that you need to watch news four times a day four times a day. Normally news play for like 30 minutes. So if you're going to watch news four times a day, that means that you're spending two hours. That's like minimum. That had, that's what he said. You're spending a minimum of two hours a day watching news. If you are not getting paid, you are not adding any value. And this thing is also not adding any value in your life then what is the point? What is the point of knowing everything that happens around you? What is the point of knowing what's going on in Iraq? Of knowing what's going on in, in Cape Town? Of knowing what's going on in Durban? Of knowing what's going on in any part of the world? Each and every day you are consuming this information, but then there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's different from someone that has to consume all of these things because they have to write a research paper. They have to write a report. This, whatever that they are consuming, it is feeding into something. It is feeding into their work. It is feeding into their studies. And 
those studies also fit into something that report also fit, fits into something it fits into them yielding results at work and that's them getting paid but if you an ordinary citizen each and every day spend more than two hours consuming news because you want to know what is going on around you what is the point once you know what you do once you know that there is war happening in another part of the world what does that how does that influence your decision making on a day-to-day -day basis do you stop going to work do you stop going to the shops do you stop going out do you stop doing things do you stop leaving because there is war happening somewhere else do you now decide that you are going to go and participate in that in that war or you are going to fully support that war by actually being physically there fighting the battles no because it has nothing to do with you when a, a country and another country decide to go to war with each other how is you knowing each and every detail of that war helping you on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I'll also put it down like this because I know there might be people here thinking, well, it does affect prices. Yes, it does. It does affect the cost of living. Yes, it does. We saw what happened when it, com when it comes to Ukraine and Russia and how that influenced our prices, especially the price of oil. However, did that stop you from buying oil? Did you stop buying petrol because now prices of petrol had went up because Russia and Ukraine decided to go to war? Now that you knew the ins and outs of the war and understand it to full capacity, did it influence any of your decision? What did it change on your day-to-day -day living? What did it change? Chances are for many of us it changed nothing, but many of us spent hours and hours and hours consuming the news, consuming that content, trying to know what sparked this, what led to this, why is Putin doing all of this? We spent hours and hours, but then what were those hours being met with? Did we change the way that we live our, life, our lives? No. Did it get us did it get us paid? No. And as I said, if you're a person that watches the news each and every day because you are drawing a report or you are doing a research, it makes sense because it is few it is adding value on something. But if you're an ordinary citizen spending more than two hours on the news, watching, consuming news religiously, that is not adding value in your life. And that is where you find that your sense of thinking get captured as well because you start not thinking for yourself and you start thinking based on the things that you consume. And that is the fact for many things in life. We start thinking, we think and act based on the things that we surround ourselves with, things that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that is the first thing that you need to do if you want to take any control of your life. You need to start being mindful of the amount of things that you consume on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't need to know everything that happens around you. So basically, when you don't need to be umanda bene. Second best thing that you can do for yourself if you want to gain back control of your life is limit the amount of social media that you consume now i remember when i didn't have a youtube channel i watched a lot of youtube i watched youtube religiously and i enjoyed it it's one of my favorite platforms i don't watch tv like i don't watch tv programs so i don't have dstv and so i was watching youtube a lot then i asked myself i watch so much of this and there are people who get paid do i get paid no i don't get paid and so what did I decide to do? I need to find a way to make sure that as much as I'm consuming this thing because I'm enjoying it, I love YouTube, I love learning, I love that there's everything when it comes to learning and equipping and just growing as a person on YouTube. The platform is just great. But me consuming it each and every day so much, but not getting paid from it, what value is, like, is, that, it's, is the trade-off worth it? And for me, the trade-off was not worth it. And so I decided to start creating because I was like, if I consume so much of this thing or so much of this platform, I'm constantly giving them my resources through the money that I pay each and every month for Wi-Fi. And I'm also paying them with my attention. 
why can't I actually be a creator myself? So that way the trade-off will be worth it. I know that as much as I'm consuming, but then I'm also working. I'm also a creator my, myself and eventually I'm going to get paid. And then I decided to create a YouTube account. I decided to actually post on YouTube. So I'm saying this is if you are going to be actively engaging on Instagram, watching, liking, commenting, which there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe start thinking about how do you become a creator yourself? You don't need to be an influencer. You don't need to be a big influencer by ev like everyone else, but then you just need to create, create something. Don't just be a consumer of things or be a consumer of social media, but become a creator yourself. So that means that even on Instagram, as much as you are there spending hours and hours consuming the content in that platform, you also need to spend time creating content that you can post on the platform. That way, eventually you get paid. Because the whole point is, do not focus so much of your attention on things that don't get you paid. If you're going to consume hours and hours of YouTube, you know, loving the YouTube creators, loving our content creators, loving our content and watching our content, which we very much so appreciate, but I'm also going to be real with you. Spend as much time creating and posting on YouTube so that you can eventually get paid so that you can eventually make money because that is the thing that's going to add value in your life. Yes, you're going to learn. Yes, you're going to be inspired. Yes, you're going to improve your finances by watching my videos. But end of the day, it still doesn't get you paid. It still doesn't get you paid. So if you're going to spend resources, time, consuming content on social media, make sure that you also get paid somehow. The third point is stop commenting on things that do not add value in your life. I know that when we're on Twitter, when we're on Instagram, when we're watching the news here on YouTube, we want to comment, we want to say something because we feel like, no, I need to get my point across. But once you've had made your point across, you have written your point and you have you feel good about yourself for the fact that you said it. What value is it adding? If you are commenting on someone that did something bad and you really feel convicted that you need to say something and after you've said something, you feel good about yourself, what has it changed? Has that person stopped being doing bad things? Has like most, most of these celebrities and these people that post on, on Twitter and riled up your emotions changed? No, it has not. You commenting on someone who wrecked somebody's marriage because you feel so compelled to say something because it's just the wrong thing to do. You can't be like that. What kind of a woman are you to go and break somebody's marriage and you feel good about writing that point or writing that comment in that tweet? Did it change something? Did that person actually now stop wrecking that marriage? Did they stop dating that person because you said something? Does it stop majority of women out there who are marriage wreckers? You know, like I want you to think that way. Before you press publish on that Twitter comment that you really feel so strongly about, every time, if you are watching my videos right now, I'm actually challenging you to think, once I've posted this, yes, I'm going to feel good about myself that I said something, but what will it change? You know, there's something that Vusi Tembegwayo said in one of the interviews that I watched with Pionio, Pino Samuel, and he was saying he stopped asking or probing the political people or the ministers because he realized it wasn't changing anything. And so I'm challenging you that whenever you feel that you feel the need to say something, whenever you feel like you need to comment because this is an important discussion, this is an important point and you need to make your point across because you feel good about yourself after you've made it. I want you to ask yourself before you publish that, is it going to change anything? Is it going to now make the minister of police, whoever the minister is, is it now going to make Peggy Tele be more intentional in terms of dealing with crime in this country? No. 
Is it going to make Ramaphosa stop being a businessman just because now he did not declare millions and millions of the money that he had in dollars in his house? No. Is it going to mean that now Mihlale is no longer going to be in this relationship just because everyone called her a marriage wrecker? No. She will decide to move on with her life, not because you said something. You know, the president will decide to do whatever with his life, not because you said anything. Peggy Taylor will decide to act the way that he wants to act, or Mbalula will decide to act the way that he wants to act because he wants to do that, not because you said something. That's just how much value your comments or your thoughts add in these people's life but you feel so good after saying them your attention your energy goes into these things but they add no value they make no change because why you do not make real impact by commenting on things you don't you you just don't and then the last point which might ruffle some feathers and might come across as being insensitive but it doesn't matter it has to be said you need to realize, if you want to take back control of your life, you need to realize that government will never do anything for you. If it's not service delivery, like the basic needs that we all need in terms of water and sanitation, electricity, and, and we have seen, we have seen how that has failed, by the way if it's not proper shelter and all these other things, as it is stated in the constitution, well, the government really cannot do much for you. And I know that this is going to be like, how can you say that? They are responsible. No, the government is actually not responsible for giving you jack. It's not. So you need to stop expecting that government is going to do things for you. Because once you stop expecting government to do things for you, you then start challenging yourself in terms of what can I do for myself? How can I create opportunities for myself? Because here's the thing, I'm just going to just explain this to you as a person that started public admin, I started government in and out, and I'm working in government. Government is designed to provide basic services, basic services. If you want to understand what are basic services, study your constitution. Government, that's the government's role, to provide that service. Ne? And not to provide it to, to the poor, provide it to everyone. Ne? Whether you are rich, poor, whatever, we all need the same water and sanitation. We all need the same proper roads. We all need the same, you know, we all need the same level of service. Then the, the role of government is to then monitor and ev evaluate those service provision. So that is the whole point of government, to provide the services, the basic services, and then monitor and evaluate those things. So once you understand the role of government, you will then stop expecting government to do things for you. You will understand that job, government is not there to give you a job. Yes, you can be employed in government, but then it, it's not their responsibility to give you a job. It's not a must that they must give you a job. It's also not a role of government to create jobs. I think people, we need to understand this. So once you understand economics, watch Ray Dalio. I would write Dalio. Please, please watch Ray Dalio's videos if you want to understand how economics works. And then you can also stop waiting and waiting that government does something. Because once you understand the role of government, you will then start making critical decisions that can really make a real impact without waiting for handouts because the reason why people make these decisions when it comes to how they vote and how they put these people in power is because they are not understanding what is the role of government they don't understand what is the role of government so government is not there to give you a job it's not there to create jobs jobs are created through a healthy economy it's created through a healthy economy. So the economy has to be working. It has to be strong in order for the job 
for jobs to be created. And even then, there has to be a proper supply of skills or skilled people to meet those jobs, you know? So right now, the problem that we have in this country is that we have highly skilled people, we have highly qualified people, we have people with qualification, but then we have less of the demand for those jobs. And that is a sign of just how crazy the economy is currently. So my point here is, once you understand that government will not do anything for you, then you will start thinking, what can I do for myself? You start thinking, how can I create opportunities for myself? How can I do things for myself? Now, you see, the reason why we have so many people coming from outside of South Africa coming into the country is because their government has failed. Many of them, their government has failed them. But because they understand that I still have a brain in my head, I can still think for myself. I have hands to do something. They start thinking, what can I do for myself? How can I create opportunities for myself? How can I go seek out opportunities for myself and so they go out of their countries and go to places where they can actually find those opportunities so what i'm saying here is so long as you are sitting waiting that government is going to do something for you you are not going to get anywhere in life because that's not how government is designed government is created government is there to provide basic services and then monitor and evaluate those services monitor and evaluate to make sure that those services are really having an impact on people's lives that the resources Sources that have been allocated are used towards those services that are used towards providing those basic services. Government is not there to give you a job. Government is not there to create opportunities for you. Yes, our government is trying and clearly is failing and that is because they are trying to do something that they are not designed to do. They are not designed to do. Ne? So I really wanted to say this point because I feel like many people get caught up and I know it's going to ruffle some feathers. I know. But I know that I, I, I feel like many of us, especially the young people, we get so caught up in what government is failing to do for us. You know, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't call out government. I'm not saying that we shouldn't say that uh, the service is poor, especially if it's linked to service delivery and the service to the basic needs as per the constitution. You should call it out. You should, you know, you should. The energy crisis in this country is and yes, we should call that out. We should. But then does that mean that you have to spend hours and hours of your energy calling them out? No. And so I'm sharing these points with you because I know that as a country that is facing a lot of problems, we feel very compelled and very motivated to say something, be engaged, watch news in and out on a day-to-day -day basis, hours and hours watching news without realizing that it is not propelling us forward. It is not getting us paid. We're still just as poor. We're still just as struggling. But then yes, you you and you feel good because you're thinking yeah but i know now i know that this is what is happening but then you're still poor you're still struggling you're still financially struggling you still you know you're still the same old person that you've always been because this thing has not allowed you to grow as a person and has not challenged you to develop as a person but in your mind it feels like you have but you have not and so just Please be mindful of the things that you consume, even if you are consuming them. But just always be mindful that there is a time whereby you need to cut off. And that if it's now brought us to a point whereby it even affects your ability to make money, you need to start really thinking about that. If you really want to make impact, start by making some money. <laughs> That's just a simple thing. Start making some money. Once you make some money, then you start realizing how much impact you can have and how much, how many lives you can change. Ne? So with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Please take care and stay safe. Bye.